Become a Leslie's Pro member, and with almost a thousand locations conveniently located less than three miles from your service route, you can quickly get in and out and take care of your customers. Get Skimmer, America's number one pool service software platform. Listeners of the podcast can try Skimmer for free. Visit my website, swimmingpoollearning.com, and click on the Leslie's Pro and the Skimmer banners to learn more. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Yeah! Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about offering discounts what discounts you should offer, if they even work, if offering discounts is something you should do in your area, and the whole concept basically of discounting things to get customers or to make existing customers happy. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's Referral Program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. I think the word discount or sale has become part of this modern language that we talk about. If you're looking for anything out there, you're always looking for something on sale or at a discounted price. And a lot of service companies like plumbers will advertise a special discounted price for a drain clean or a snake. Air conditioner companies will offer a discounted price for a yearly checkup. Those are all smart things to do. And I think in some respects, those are pretty effective strategies for those particular industries. Now in the pool industry, of course, a lot of companies will offer discounts to get their foot in the door. And this is an effective strategy. And I would say that in most areas, it's kind of hit and miss. Some of this may be effective depending on what you offer. Others may be ineffective based on research, based on history, and based on my own practical experience with offering discounts. I'll start with something that some people think that will get their foot in the door, and that is not representing their services correctly This happens a lot if you're using a service like Thumbtack or HomeAdvisor. You'll see companies advertising $45 a month pool service, and that gets their foot in the door, obviously, but that's just their weekly rate. And they'll tell the customer, oh, that's just one service per week. If you want monthly service, the rate's going to be, you know, multiply that by four. Or they may say that's just a introductory rate for the first month. And then after that, it's 180 or whatever. To get their foot in the door, they'll do that. And somewhat effective on those apps because they'll you'll undercut other competitors. No one likes when someone does that. And a lot of companies will do that, especially any industry over the spectrum of service companies. Don't like other people doing that. I have a carpet cleaning person that I use, and he doesn't like when other companies are like, you know, $99 for three rooms. But they don't go into detail. And they usually land the bid and he loses out because they charge you because you didn't get them. It's complicated when you use those kind of services. If you've used any of those, Yelp, Thumbtack, or Nextdoor, or um, Home Advisor, you know that there's fees involved. And so that's a strategy that's utilized there a lot of time to beat the competition. Not really that great with landing the bids, I don't think, because the customers don't like that kind of bait and switch tactic. I've also seen flyers from pool companies that are offering, you know, first month for $99 or first month free. Now, those are something to consider not doing because once you start discounting your service to that extent, you're making it look like you are a bargain discount company. Now, I know that's probably not what you're thinking when you do something like this, you know, offering half off or $99 for the first month, but the customers that you're attracting will have that discount mindset. I think you're attracting a certain segment of customers that are going to want to continuously get discounts from you for everything you do at that point. So a lot of times when you hear those specials on the radio from plumbers or HVAC companies, they're a specific discount for a specific issue. And it's not like they're offering monthly service at a discount. I don't think many of them would do that. You know, if you have a pest control company, not too many would offer something like that because they already know that they don't want to attract that kind of bargain customer that is going to take the discount and probably cancel the quarterly service right away after getting the discount on their service. So that's something 
that you don't want to attract. So I would say that off offers like that are probably not as effective as you think. Yes, you probably may land that account, but it may not be a customer that you would like to have long term because of that discount mentality. I think it's far better to offer something free that's tangible that doesn't make it look like you're discounting things. So for example, I would say, you know, charge your service rate that you normally would charge. But for the first filter cleaning, now here in California, we charge for filter cleaning because we have full size filters, you know, 60 square foot D filters, the four cartridge type filters, the quad cartridge type filters. And I think this is something that, of course, you can give a discount for. So what you can do is you can say, you know, you have your monthly service rate to pay. And then at the first filter cleaning, you'll discount the filter inspection and you'll give them half off the filter cleaning. So if you charge $90, you're going to do it for $45 and you're going to give them a free inspection, quote unquote. I think that's fair. It's a good discount and it's something that's tangible. Or if you charge for salt cell cleaning, you can give the customer the first salt cell cleaning for free and then subsequently charge after that. So it should be something that's kind of they can absorb. And it's not really a discount on the services that you perform, like the weekly pool service. So it's something that's not going to get the customer the idea that you are a discount kind of service. If that makes sense, I think that's how you should look at it. And that's kind of the discounts you should offer. You can offer discounts to, you know, military, first responders. Some companies offer 20% off or 10% off. That's perfectly fine as well. That's a good advertising strategy for your website. Also for your truck. I've seen this on trucks also, like, you know, 15% off military, police, first responders. And people kind of like that. They're attracted to that kind of discount. Even if they're not first responders, they'll be like, hey, that company is pretty nice. They're giving a discount to people that are serving the community. So I think that's an effective marketing strategy as well. How many first responders or military are you going to get that are actually on service? Probably not as many, but you're going to advertise the fact that you do give a discount for that. And again, that's not making it look like you're a discount service company and you don't want to give that impression. You want to give the impression that you're a full service professional company and you don't get that impression, I don't think, when the HVAC companies will do an inspection for 145 They don't mean to charge 280 They're giving you a half price of that, basically. And I don't consider that a discount air conditioner company at that point. Now, if they were to do it for free entirely, then that would question, you would question, you know, how do they make money? Are they going to overcharge you later? And that's another flip side of giving too many discounts up front. You may give the impression that you're just getting the customer, then you're going to take them for whatever, you know, the extreme amount of money that you can take them for and everything from installs or repairs. So that's the other flip side of a discount is that it makes people suspicious of your actual motive and business practices. And that's why I don't think it's a good thing to do to set them up either thinking that you're a discount company or that you're just quoting them a low rate and then you're going to take them for a ride later. And that's one reason why those that do this on Thumbtack and quote just a partial rate or a chemical only rate for customers and then they tell them that that was just for chemicals. People don't like that and it gives a bad impression of your overall company and your business practices. Discounts also affect your cash flow and your bottom line. So consider this as well, that is it really worth this particular discount to do this? And sometimes the customer will ask you for a discount on an install. If you're doing a pump and motor and you charge $450, they will be like, oh, can you do it for $360 or something? And they'll ask you to cut your rate. Now, there's room in there probably for some margin and some cut, but you really have to think about, again, are you setting yourself up to always be discounted by this customer? And it could just be the customer's personality. They always want a discount on something. But you can come to like a happy medium and say, yeah, I can do it for 410 or 415 And that's good enough, I think, for most customers. And it's a small discount that you can absorb without really affecting your bottom line because truthfully, every dollar counts in this business. And if you're discounting things here and there, and if you're giving free stuff to customers, and here's another thing that I think, it's one of those touchy subjects, but it's something that you really need to address, and that's matching pricing on Amazon and giving parts basically for free in some cases. So the discounts on equipment sometimes are fine and practical, but I would say discounting parts because they found something cheaper on Amazon 
and you're using the supplier's pump basket. I'll just use this as an example. Let's say you get a whisper flow basket from your supplier. You pay $11 for it. You put it in, you charge the customer $20, which is a pretty good markup. They show you a picture of a pump basket on Amazon for $9.99. Of course, it's not Pentair. It's some other manufacturer, Daiwu or something. And then they want you to match that price. Well, you can't because you're losing money on that part. You paid more than what Amazon sells it for. So I would just tell them at that point, well, I'll just take that basket out. You can order that one. When you get it, I'll put it in for free and I'll just reverse the charges. Hold on to that basket, use it somewhere else. It's one of those sad things that these generic parts are much, much cheaper than even the wholesale cost of some of the parts you get. Now, truthfully, you can order some of these on Amazon, I guess, and then sell them to your customers. But to me, you're really not competing against Amazon because the suppliers cannot carry generic products because they're not allowed to by the manufacturer. They'll lose the contract because they have to carry OEM products only, original manufactured products. And then, of course, you're handicapped because you're getting it from your supplier and you need the original products because that's all they carry. They may carry off-brands. There may be some off-brands like Aladdin they can use but or Valpak. But for the majority of parts, you're going to use a manufacturer part and you can't compete with the internet. So what I tell customers usually, instead of discounting something that I paid for that's going to lose money, I'll just tell them to order what they want, put it in there, and they'll see the inferior quality. Most of these products are inferior in quality and you can tell them, you can just explain to them as well. And what I do all the time, I let them know that this is the manufactured pump basket. That one you're showing me is just a generic one. You can get it if you want, but I can tell you that the quality is not going to be as good. And usually they'll be like, yeah, it's fine. You, it's, it's already in there. They're just questioning why you charge them so much for it in some cases. And it's not a matter of they want the cheaper one. And it's a matter of they want you to justify the price of something. And that's the key also is that you're not going to just kind of blanket discount or blanket say, okay, well, just order that and I'll put it in for you. You want to also get to the bottom of why they're asking that question. And many will be asking that because they want to just verify that they're getting a fair price for something. Because we are, again, in a discount sales, you know, sale-oriented society where everything is on sale, everything is discounted. You go to Amazon, you'll see the price of something like $99. It'll be slashed and it'll be like $79. So people are accustomed to seeing that. And they're always going to want some kind of discount of some kind, I think, at some point. You can kind of do this in your business. You can give them a quote and then you can round it down or take some percentage off and people will be happy with that. A lot of companies will do this to mark something up to a a number. I think Kohl's is famous for this with their pricing. They'll mark it up to like full retail, like a shirt's like $49 and then they'll have it on sale for $29.99, which is probably the price they should be selling it at, but it looks like a huge discount. Same with you. You can quote them on a filter pump install and then discount everything 10% and everyone's happy with that. Or, you know, if you install something or put a part in there, you can give them a discount on that. But you should charge for every part with some markup, even a small little nut for a Polaris wheel, even though it's like $4, which is kind of a ridiculous price for something. But charge the customer for that. You know, you have to charge for everything because everything adds up. And if you don't charge for certain things, customers may get accustomed to you doing things at no charge. I think the bottom line here is that everything is kind of perception and optics, how they perceive your company. If you show up in a fancy truck that's wrapped and then you're giving one month free, the optics of that is not great. If you're giving half off the first month, I guess you could probably get away with something like that. It's not the end of the world, but then you're attracting a customer that's looking for discounts. But if you discharge your regular rate, you present yourself as a legitimate business that's, you know, there to service the pool correctly and maybe offer something down the road as a discount. Like I mentioned, the half off the filter or free salt cell cleaning or something as tangible like that, but it's not making you look like a discount company is the best way to operate. Now, if you're in a really competitive area and you do need to offer these discounts, you know the pitfalls that I mentioned here. So you're aware of the fact that you're attracting a certain segment, but sometimes you do have to do something to get that account, whether it's to discount the rate. And I think maybe discounting the rate would be the best option versus offering one month free or you know half off. If your rates are 190 a month, 
you could probably do 180 and if the customer is fine, you know, just depending on what your competitors are at. You really can't price match every competitor. Some are really low. And I think if you're just right in the middle, you're going to land more accounts that way than if you're super high or super low. I mean, super low, you're going to land a lot. But is there actually profit in that? And I guess, you know, if you're thinking about discounts, how profitable are they? How many customers they bring in? There's all kinds of algorithms you can think of. But to keep it simple, I think if it starts to affect your profit and you're not really getting a lot of good customers with the discounts, they're not going to be effective at that point. And I would try a different strategy. I would maybe give existing customers a $150 Amazon gift card if they refer you to a customer and they stick with you for, you know, 45 days or 60 days. To me, that's probably more effective because to buy a pool on, you know, to buy a specific pool service account would cost you somewhere like around $1,000 or so. So if you're giving a customer that's existing a good discount or a good incentive like a $150 Amazon card, they'll definitely refer you to their neighbors or friends or make it 200 whatever you want to do. That's a much better investment and you're going to get a good customer because it's a referral from an existing customer. And then you'll give that customer an incentive for referring you. Same thing with realtors. You can discount the rates if you're doing a pool for a realtor taking care of a pool during a listing. But make sure that the listing agent is going to really promote you and give the seller or the buyer's agent your information so that you can land that account. I've done that before in the past. It's been really successful. I've also taken care of pools for flippers that are flipping a pool, flipping a house, I should say, with a pool, and they want the pool maintained. I'll give them a slight discount so that I can land that account once they close escrow on that. So those are all other options that are definitely on the table from one profession to another. You can do something like that. Even builders that want to do startups, you can give them a little discount. If they can guarantee you're going to land that account, that's perfectly fine as well. So they do have a place, but they should not be the primary driver of your business. And I think as a professional, you should sell yourself as a company that's not a discount-oriented co- uh, company. Looking for the podcasts that I have recorded, you can find those on my website, swimmingprolearning.com. Just click on the podcast icon, and then there'll be a drop-down menu of over 1,500 podcasts for you there. And if you're interested in the coaching program that I offer, you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week. God bless. Real quick, if you're not using pool service software, try Skimmer free for 30 days at getskimmer backslash poolguy. Again, that's getskimmer backslash poolguy. Skimmer, everything you need to run your pool service business all in one app.